The price may have been right. The work atmosphere was often really wrong on the TV show set. The Price is Right and Bob Barker, both separately and jointly, have a past full of complaints, including sexual harassment, racial discrimination, wrongful termination, and emotional abuse and intimidation. Many lawsuits have been filed against the Price is Right producers and its longtime former host, Bob Barker, addressing all of those types of complaints. And even though Bob Barker moved on from the show years ago, he seems to have left behind an institutionalized attitude that allowed show executives to treat the models once known as Barker Beauties and other female staffers as second-class citizens. I'm so glad that you all enjoyed part one of our Bob Barker stories, but there's definitely more to it. We're going to do something a little bit differently today and break this story down as a list the top 10 most scandalous lawsuits filed against Bob Barker and or The Price is Right. This video will count down number 10 through number six of the most scandalous lawsuits in the history of The Price is Right. My next old school gossip video will finish off the list and take us from number five to number one. So subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can see that one. But today, let's get started on this countdown. Here we go. Number 10, Janice Pennington versus CBS and The Price is Right. In June 1988, original Barker Beauty, Janice Pennington suffered a serious injury on the set of The Price is Right after a cameraman swung his camera in the wrong direction during the opening sequence of the show. The cameraman struck Janice in the face with his camera, knocking her off of the four-foot stage and into the audience area called Contestants Row. The blow left her unconscious and in front of a terrified audience. She was badly injured, with a broken collarbone to be exact, and she was immediately rushed to the hospital for surgery. The production of this taping stopped for roughly 45 minutes until the staff was assured that Janice would survive. That episode resumed with only Holly Hallstrom and Diane Parkinson modeling. Over the next several weeks, while Janice recovered from her injuries, a substitute model filled in for her until she was well enough to return to work. Janice made her much-awaited return to the show in November. Although she made a full recovery, she could no longer wear swimsuits because her surgeries left her with some damaging scars. Her two surgeries also left her with one shoulder shorter than the other. In February 1989, Pennington filed a suit against CBS, citing negligence. CBS tried to get away with paying her $76,000 medical bill plus $175,000. Janice refused the network's offer. Janice's case went to trial, and in March of 1992, a jury awarded her $1.3 million for her injuries she sustained on the set of The Price is Right, which was $100,000 more than her attorney, Larry Feldman, was seeking. Number 9. Shane Sterling versus Bob Barker and The Price is Right Shane Sterling started on The Price is Right as a Barker beauty, and she stayed on during the transition to Drew Carey becoming the host. She had to take some time off from work during her pregnancy. And after nearly a year and a half after giving birth, Shane was finally allowed to return to the show in 2008, but now with Drew Carey as the host. Shane's appearances started in June, but her stay would be short-lived as she was then terminated for good in October of the same year. In 2010, almost three years after she was dismissed from The Price is Right, Shane Sterling decided to take her case to court and she filed a lawsuit against CBS and Fremantle Media. And even though at this point he was the ex-host, she named Bob Barker in her court claim, stating that he played a major role in her being dismissed from the show after announcing her pregnancy. Shane was seeking more than $25,000 in damages and emotional distress. She stated that Bob Barker had reportedly told her that she should not work on the show while pregnant because of liability issues and that he forced her into an early pregnancy leave and wasn't allowed to return to work until 
a year and a half after Bob Barker retired from the show. Shane also argued that her being forced into taking too much time off during her pregnancy did not give her the opportunity to become acquainted with the new staff, and that had she been allowed less time off, she would have had a better chance of retaining her job. Shane stated that the reason for her firing was because the show was, quote, moving in another direction, unquote. Mike Richards, a head producer, whose name you will hear more than once in this countdown, reported that during the time that Shane was on pregnancy leave, several creative changes had been made to the show. One of those changes included downsizing the number of models from 10 to five. Another change? In order to adapt to Drew Carey's improvisational comedic style, they wanted the remaining five models to maintain a diversity of appearances, superior modeling talent, and personalities that could best interact with Drew Carey. The producers went on to state that Shane was found lacking in those areas, so she was let go. Shane reportedly had trouble demonstrating sufficient evidence that her employment was terminated because of the effects of her pregnancy. She tried pointing to comments made by one of the show's producers, who testified during a deposition that Shane might have been, quote, a few pounds overweight, unquote. She was referring to Kathy Greco, who had made similar comments to another model in the past that got the prices right in hot water. But that wasn't enough to show why producers waited more than a year after she gave birth to fire her. The producers had an alternative explanation for why she was let go. And the judge found the producer's reason to be a legitimate one and ruled in their favor. He said that regardless of the merits of such an argument, all of this happened between 2006 and 2007, a period where the statute of limitations had passed. So, unfortunately for Shane, the judge also had previously dismissed CBS from the lawsuit because the network didn't have anything to do with staffing for the show. The judge dismissed the allegations of discrimination, but also Shane's remaining charges that producers should be held responsible for negligent hiring and supervision, as well as intentional infliction of emotional distress. Shane walked away empty-handed. Number eight, Janice Pennington versus Bob Barker and The Price is Right. Janice is the only Barker beauty to make this top 10 list twice. If you checked out our first Bob Barker video, you'll be familiar with this case. Janice Pennington was fired from The Price is Right on the same day as Kathleen Bradley, aka Mrs. Parker from Friday. Both Barker beauties had their last appearance on the show on the same day, and the fact that it was their last episode was unbeknownst to both of them. Like Kathleen, Janice Pennington said that she believed that she was actually let go because she gave a deposition statement in yet another Barker beauty, Holly Hallstrom's, wrongful termination suit, and her statement was against Bob Barker. Neither Janice nor Kathleen were given a proper formal send-off from The Price is Right as their unannounced final appearances aired on December 13, 2000. This left diehard fans of the show angry and outraged. Naturally, there was more anger over Janice's dismissal because she had been with the series since its September 4th, 1972 premiere with Bob Barker on the revamped edition. Shortly after her firing, Janice, just like Kathleen Bradley, sued for wrongful termination. And... Janice Pennington's case was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. Janice's settlement contained a hush clause in which she was prohibited from publicly speaking out against Bob Barker. Number 7. Lanisha Cole versus The Price is Right Producers Former The Price is Right model Lanisha Cole filed a lawsuit on September the 7, 2011 against The Price is Right producers Adam Sandler and Michael Richards. Not that Adam Sandler and not that Michael Richards. And their production company as well, Fremantle Media. Her lawsuit alleged wrongful constructive termination, wrongful harassment, failure to prevent harassment, 
intentional and negligent infliction of emotional distress and sexual harassment by the show's producers. With this lawsuit, she joined the ranks of a long list of women to lodge similar complaints in the classic game show's history. Her lawyer said that her case was about exploitation of power and control over women by bullying and harassing. Lanisha Cole claimed that in 2009, the Price is Right producer Michael Richards suddenly stopped talking to her and began showing favoritism to another model whom he was dating, but chastised Lanisha based on rules that had not previously existed. She also claimed that Price is Right producer Adam Sandler once burst into the women's dressing room where she was partially nude, wearing nothing but bikini thong underwear, and yelled at her in front of other models for not wearing a microphone. He never addressed her nakedness or apologized or even tried to cover his eyes. He carried on yelling at her as if she was fully clothed. And... Michael Richards was eventually dismissed as a defendant and her case was settled, but with undisclosed terms, so the public will never truly know what she got. Number six, Sharon Freem, Cheryl Paris, Linda Rygart, and Paul Alter, all versus Bob Barker. On the same day that Janice Pennington and Kathleen Bradley were fired from The Price is Right, so were all of these people. And what did they all have in common? They all refused to testify on Bob Barker's behalf against longtime Barker beauty Holly Hallstrom in her wrongful termination case. So Bob, in turn, wrongfully terminated all of them. All of these people, with the exception of the one man named Paul Alter, filed wrongful termination suits and received financial settlements in exchange for dropping their lawsuits. Paul was able to regain his employment very shortly after all of this catastrophe, and he stayed hired on at the Price is Right until he retired. The only man in the bunch. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Well, you guys, that's it for the first half of our countdown. Join me for the next video and we will run down the top five that includes three of the most recognizable faces in the entire history of The Price is Right. Well, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that applaud button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.